Hello and welcome to program 70 in this series of programs and tutorials that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. And a GoldPass member asked me if I could use the techniques that I'd used previously in terms of producing zigzags with uh, another indicator. And so that's what program 70 is all about. And just to explain what I mean, if we go back to program 65, you'll see that what I did, I created uh, a zigzag. And uh, with that, each time it would color the lines and draw the lines, but it would also show what the, the move was in terms of the price move. And then it would also flag if there had been a Fibonacci ratio between the two, the, uh, the previous zigzag and the current zigzag. And if so, it would print the percentage within a certain user-defined user input tolerance. And so you can see that here, program 65. But what the new program does is very similar apart from what we're doing now is instead of using the price, go back to 65, we're looking at price high pivots, price low pivots, price high pivots, etc. What we're doing in this new program is we're using an indicator or we're using an indicator value. These indicators are actually plotted on the chart um, using an indicator. But for example, in this in this case, I've used a simple moving average. Uh, you could use something completely different. But what we've got here, we've got the, the zigzag going to a pivot high in the, the high moving over the moving average of the highs and then down to the low then up to the high and down to the low now what i've done is actually created two different functions one of them's a slightly more simple one and just shows just draws the, the zigzags and adds the information about the moves the second one is a little more complicated because what it does is it does the same as the first one but it also will flag those Fibonacci moves and it will also return some vectors containing some additional information so we're going to quickly look at both of them so starting with the more simple one and what I'm going to do is just go to a program a show me program that uh, accompanies the function and incidentally if you just do decide to download these you'll get the two functions and three show me studies that show how to call the functions uh, if you're a gold pass member you will get the, the simple function and the uh, accompanying show me study at no cost if you go to the gold pass area on the program page you will find the download there so anyway let's go to the zigzag display test which is calling the function which i call zigzag display and this is the one that doesn't include the Fibonacci and you'll see here what I've done is just added it all into the call of the function including some text to show you what the the things are now what I've done here for the sake of uh, an example I've created a high val and low value that are just based on a moving average now the high val and the low val as I've called them they they can actually be the same so we could have, for example have high val and high val so what I'm going to do is just going to verify that and go to the chart and now what you'll see is that we're going, because we're just using the one moving average, we're going to this high pivot here on the high, on the moving average of the high, and then the same for the low, then the high, then the same for the low, then the high. So I do that just to demonstrate that we do not need to have two different values. You could have the same value. Okay, so that's the uh, the more simple function. Let me just look at it one more time and you'll see that what we've got, the two values that you're passing into it, the pivot strength left and right, We've got the retrace percentage, which is the amount that determines how many zigzags there are. We've got uh, the colors, white, orange, and the color of the text. So the color of the, the zigzag lines themselves, color of the, the text, the thickness, and then we can define the, the fonts. Now, because this uh, function is using the uh, drawing classes included with TradeStation, this will not work, unfortunately, on multi charts okay so that's the uh, the simpler of the two programs let's now go to the slightly more complex and i've got it already applied to the chart so what i'm going to do is just going to turn off this one and i'm going to turn on zigzag test simple which is calling the other function and you'll see now that uh, things are pretty similar apart from we do get this difference that we've now got thick lines when we do get a Fibonacci ratio or close to one. And we also, in addition to displaying the actual movement, we also show what the closest Fibonacci ratio is. And uh, if we just go through, you'll see we've got two more there, downward move Fibonacci or close to Fibonacci ratio uh, and so on. And if if we don't have a Fibonacci, we just get the the move and the lines are still there, but they're not as uh, not as thick 
as they are with the Fibonacci. So let's have a look at uh, this program. So it's a zigzag test simple. So again, this thing is included with the download and this one's got quite a lot of comments and additional information, but the inputs are essentially the same as they were for the one we just looked at. We've got the uh, retrace percentage, left strength, right strength. Uh, we've also got this Boolean, which says check for fib, and we can set this to true or false. If we set it to false, we don't do the uh, the Boolean check. If we set it to true, we do, and we, we're testing to see whether there has been a ratio close to a Boolean. Now the tolerance, that is, I said close to the Boolean, this is the amount that uh, the percentage that you can be above or below for it still to be counted as being close to the Fibonacci. The, uh, the colors, I think, are self-explanatory. The line thickness, this is the line thickness when a, when a Fibonacci has been detected. And then, as I mentioned, we do store information in some output vectors. And what this um, input does is determine how many elements there can be in those output vectors. Then finally, we've got the font and the font size for, for the labels. And then what I've also done, let's just go down to the call. We actually have to create the new vectors here and then we go down now in this particular one we're not actually using those vectors but another program that you get with the download is zigzag test this is also calling the more advanced program that checks for fibonacci the inputs of course are the same but in this case what we do there's a little bit more information uh, about the vectors so if we look at the the full call here we've got the, uh, the vectors that are being returned are these four values at the end. And what I've done is just created a little simple statement here just to show you how you could get information out of those. And what I've said uh, is if the count of the up moves vector is greater or equal to three and it's the last bar on the chart, then we're going to print some information from the vector and we're going to print up moves items, uh, item zero, as type double, up moves item one, as type double, and up moves item two as type double. And you can just verify that they, they actually do represent the, um, the most recent up moves. Okay, so there's a very brief introduction to these two new functions. I hope you will find them useful. Please email me if you have questions. And if you're a Gold Pass member, please feel free to uh, go to the program page to download this, the free download of the simpler function. Thank you very much.